I hope you die of AIDS soon. You deserve it. I wish I could shake his hand and give him a medal for giving it to you. Do you think, for example, that homosexuality is disgusting? Absolutely. Do you think that homosexuality should be low? Absolutely. Do you think it is right for people to have a physical disgust towards homosexuality? Absolutely. Does it make you nauseous? Yes. Or do you think it's something that is shamefully wicked and vile? Yes, of course it is. Right. It's an abomination. How much stronger a word can one use to to uh, clarify what uh, homosexual homosexuality is to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, Doris Robinson's entitled to her Christian views. She can't be censored, can she? She's following God's word, isn't she? An outside body who is not committed to the moral values that the people of Northern Ireland are committed to is prepared to say, you will legislate perversion and immorality. So I came out at the age of 16 to my family. I kind of knew I was gay from I was about nine, whenever Queer as Folk was on TV. I used to watch it on silent in my bedroom. But when I, whenever you came out, it wasn't really a big surprise, let's be honest, it was <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. You know, we, we, you know, we'd had plenty of, uh, there were plenty of signs, there were plenty of signals. Mum and Dad were brilliant. I just was a bit of a dramatic wee bitch and moved out of my house because my parents didn't give me the dramatic come out that I wanted. I lived on the gay scene for quite a while. Um, I worked, I drank, I play, I slept about the gay scene uh, for most of my late teens. And then at the age of uh, 21, I uh, had a one night stand, ended up I woke up the next morning realising that I'd un had unprotected sex. I had heard of things like gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, and I had heard of this word, these letters HIV and the word AIDS um, bandied about, but I hadn't a clue what that meant. Uh, in, in Northern Ireland, the sex education is little to none. Uh, the only sex education I think I had was in religious studies. God condemns homosexual and lesbian practices. It is perversion in his eyes. My family are all very much part of church. Um, and whenever I came out, the minister of the church that we were part of told me that I was, abs I was, you know, I was still allowed to come to church. Of course, I was still allowed to come to church, but I had to sit at the back of the church. I had to sit there for healing time um, because I needed to be healed from my homosexuality. You know, the God, the God that I know, as they say, is the God of love. You know, I don't want to get all religious with you one thing, really, but that's, you know, the God that David were talking about with the God of, you know, of anger, of oppression, with a man, you know, that's not the God that, that I worship to. We were to love you and he would look after the rest. That's, that's, that's the God that we need to to. Are you proud of your status? Because it's fucking gross. If I found out I was HIV positive, I'd kill myself. Do the world a favor. So I was up having breakfast and I got this phone call from the gum clinic saying, Matthew, we need you to come back in to get your bloods retaken. She brought me into this room and said, do you know why you're here? And she says, the reason we've had to call you in today is because we have found the HIV virus in your blood. Shit, 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 I'm gonna die. It's, it's, it's just the worst day of my life. Yeah. You know, and then the phone call. Sorry about that. It's okay, don't worry. They saw their young son, who has a whole life to live ahead of him, with this disgusting virus. My head went AWOL, and I was out of I was out of work, out of life for about a year and a half. Just I couldn't function. Um, my mental health deteriorated. I tried um, a number of times 
to to end my life. Maybe you should kill yourself. Do yourself a favor. I'll dance on your grave. You and every diseased cunt should be put down like the dogs you are. The place that I felt most comfortable on stage, I didn't feel comfortable in anymore. I felt like I shouldn't be there. I felt like I was an imposter. Anytime I looked in the mirror, I didn't feel like it was me looking back. Even though I looked exactly the same, I didn't feel it was it was the, the same person looking back because it wasn't. Everything inside was completely different than it than was on the outside. Two years after I decided to take in time out of life, my best friend, uh, Neil, messaged me and said that he is uh, he was directing a cabaret production of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. He needed a Frankenfurter and he couldn't think of anyone else that could do it apart from me. He got me back on stage, but he got me back on stage where I didn't feel uncomfortable because it wasn't me. It was this, like, absolutely fabulous alter ego. And I think probably that was one of the first times in those two years that I actually laughed. From that, I then got a full-time drag job, and I've grown this drag character for the past six years. Uh, and uh, Cherry on top is, I uh, now absolutely depend on her for everything. She's uh, my life. Whenever I got diagnosed, there was nobody for me to look up to in the media. I was this young 20-year-old, 21-year-old, living in Northern Ireland with this thing. I have now, at this stage, never met someone living with HIV. I felt so lonely. I've just felt like I was living on this island by myself. So on World AIDS Day, 1st of December 2010, I went to our biggest uh, newspaper publication called the Belfast Telegraph and said, I have my story. I wanted people to realize that if they get diagnosed with HIV in Northern Ireland, it wasn't the end of the world, that there was other people out there. Every time I did something kind of positive, <laughs> excuse the pun, uh, with my story, I got this like this wave of negativity back tenfold. Happy dying. You deserve everything. I hope the meds stop working and nothing can be done. Pneumonia. Here we come. You know, no matter the, the fact that you know that most of it is just crap, you know, that people are just making abusive comments that they're not actually physically going to do anything. But no parent likes to hear their child receive any sort of abuse. And the fact that you know that you were in your 20s didn't mean to say that uh, you weren't still our baby, our child. Any, any abuse you got hurt us because it was hurting you. And now, meet Cherry. Calling a gay couple a family doesn't make it one. That is her version. That's why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I am opposed, absolutely opposed to same-sex marriage for, for a number of reasons. Northern Ireland is the only part in the only part of the UK and Ireland that doesn't have equal marriage. And the DUP are the party that want us to be part of the UK, but they will happily pick and choose the bits that they want. And they're, they're a hateful, hateful group of dinosaurs that run our country. So for a gay person, it's difficult. For someone living with HIV, it's incredibly difficult. For a gay person living with HIV, when you are basically the stereotype, it's Fucking awful. Politicians should, should stick to the job that they're supposed to be paid to do. They should be running the country, and that is to say, you know, they should be sorting out the health service, they should be sorting out education, they should be sorting out all those issues. Moral issues, it's nothing to do with politicians. Moral issues are, are they're my business, and for them to get up and make public dictates about how we should believe, that's not that's not their remit. They that's not what I that's not what I put an X on a paper for. I don't feel like I have a place here in my own country. I love where I live and I love, I love Northern Ireland and I have such a heart for Northern Ireland, but it seems to 
not give a fuck about me. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Thank <laughs> you.